is called Nothing to Go Home To, and it's a, a half of a poem in which my brother describes a, a young man who was standing on, on the street corner, and basically he, he's told his, my brother told his story about this young man who we pass every day in inner city communities who has nothing to go home to, that's why he's standing on the street. And I took that same title, our, our, our process for creating poetry is to start with the title and build a poem around it. And this was taking it from the aspect of an African American being here in, in America who had no, oh, seemingly no history because he didn't or couldn't relate to, to Africa and which he came from. And it's called again, nothing to go home to. He said, you should be thankful that you were brought here to America happy to call America your home. He said if it wasn't for him and his fellow Christians on his civilizing missions, he said I would still be in Africa with those uncivilized savages. He said I would be there with the backward, soulless people of the world, the ones who have no history nor future. He said I should be grateful to call this great land my home, happy to call America my home. But I know in my heart I could never really call America my home because if this was my home, they wouldn't treat me the way they do. And if what they're saying about Africa is true, I don't want to go back there either. So I'm starting to feel like I don't have a home to go home to, like I'm trapped in between these two lands without a home to go home to. They got me sharecropping on a piece of worthless land. And it seems like the more I make, the more they take. Season after season, the bigger balance is due. And at the end of the harvest, I have nothing to go home to. And when I thought about moving up north, he said, you can't go nowhere. Said I couldn't leave till I paid you all I owe, so still ain't nothing to go home for. And my kids, my kids can't go to school like other children do. They gotta help me work in the fields because of the money I owe you. So thanks to my kids, and on the eyes of my kids, thanks to you coming home, ain't no home to go home to. They got me working. They got me working to survive even doing odd jobs. Seems like even the salvation of my soul is being used to maintain their life of lesion. Now my heart can never explain somebody else's pain, but why would she say I raped her? Why would she say I raped her when in reality she couldn't keep her hands off me? Told me not to tell her soul that she gonna cross me. Now they burning crosses all around town, burn my house down to the ground now. What I'm gonna do? Cause I ain't got no home to go home to. They got their dogs and their guns and they coming after me for something I ain't doing. Her heart, she know it's true. And I refuse to die for her lie to be blamed for her shame. My wife said you can try to explain, but the truth they ain't gonna believe. They ain't gonna be happy till you hanging from one of those trees. My grandmother says, son, all you can do is run, child. Please just leave. She said, if you don't leave tonight, you won't live to see the morning light. So now I'm running. So now I'm running. I know where I'm running from, but I don't know where I'm running to, because it seems like I ain't got no home to go home to. I ain't got no home to go home to, but I'm running. Running through the darkness of the woods, I'm guided by the light of my mother's face. I run into the memories of my mother's child, my mother's smile. I remember being taken out of my mother's arms as a child, I'm running. I'm running like I'm racing against my childhood memories. I remember my grandmother telling me that I laid in the blood that spilled when my father got killed. She said, but they could never kill his spirit. She said, that's why they call me Anamdi, because it means my father's inside of me. She said, that's Igbo, our native tongue, for the lane east of Benin, where our people come from. So although it seems like I don't, I guess I really do got a home to go home to. I got a home to go home to, but I can't. I wish I could run back to those African shores, but I can't. And I run to, I can't run no more. I can't run no more, but yet my mind still running. My mind still running as I'm thinking about my family and how much they're going to miss me as I stand on the banks of the Mississippi. And I say to God that I don't know what to do. And then the face of the river became the face of God. And he smiled and said, come on home, child. You got a home to go home to. And it seems the more the river roared, the more God said he loved me. Then he stretched open his arms as if he was just waiting to hug me. And as my feet leave this love this land, I can hear my grandmother on her knees praying, saying, Precious Lord, take my baby's hand. And although it's the middle of the water, the middle of the winter, the water was warm. And this world can't do me no harm, because now I'm in God's arms, and I know it real, because I can feel him holding me tight. As I'm carried under and away by the current of the river, I don't fight, because I know God's going to bring me home tonight. Thank you.